Ross Kemp, and I'm going to prison. I'm going to be spending time in one of Britain's most notorious prisons. HMP Barlini in Glasgow. This tough jail has a formidable reputation. To understand what the prisoners go through, I'm going to be admitted like any other inmate. Take them under the off. There you go. I've got exclusive access to every part of the prison, and I'll find out what the prisoners really think about Barlini. So be up at me. It's a hellhole, mate. And learn about the extreme measures prisoners will take to get weapons. That. Yeah. So you put that up his ass. Yeah. I'll work with young inmates trapped in a cycle of repeat offending. So I'm asking him. That's what I see. So I'm asking him. And meet the prisoners who have committed the worst of crimes. That's what you want. You're a murderer. Exactly. Locals call it Bar L, the Big Hoose. I'm going inside Barlini. Thousand prisoners come through these doors every year. From shoplifters to armed robbers, from sex offenders to murderers, they are all processed here. And today, I'm going to get exactly the same treatment. Just get him off the cough, please. What's your full name? Ross James Kemp. Ross, what's your date of off? 21st of the 7th, 64. You've been in a Scottish prison before? No. And sit in that great chair for me. The chair is a metal detector. Admission convicted. It checks for weapons and mobiles that may be hidden internally. Nothing in your pockets or anything, huh? Nothing. You can follow me down this way. Looking at the camera up in front of you. Ever had any issues with self-harm or suicide at all? No. No. Who's your next to Ken? Um, my wife. Stand up. Take you away, get you out with your own clothing, give you a body search. They've checked my mental well-being. Now it's the strip search. Take your clothes off. Get your arms up and spin around for me. Put that sweater on. Take your underwear off. There you go. Although I'm stripped, turn around for me. I'm relieved there's no cavity search. Put your shorts back on. Please you walk slowly past this machine for me. Stop. Turn around to face me. And another scanner, so sensitive... Walk forward. ...it can detect SIM cards from mobiles which are banned. Take a seat in there, you'll get over the hole in a minute. It's a busy place. Over a hundred other inmates are being processed today. Everything that identifies me, my clothes, my credit cards, my mobile phone, etc., have been taken away from me. Um, I've still got wedding ring on. You know, it's it's a process, and it's a process that's done to to make sure that I'm not bringing any weapons in. Uh, slightly humiliating, but in the main, they do that process to keep you safe and to keep themselves safe. Uh, right, out you come, I'll take you over to the hall now. For some, this is a rite of passage, as normal as walking to the shops. But for others, this could be the most frightening day of their life. I've yet to find out how intimidating this place really is. Any advice? Just keep your head down, you'll be fine. Just do what the staff tell you. Oh. 
The prison population in the UK has doubled in the last 25 years. Today, there are 100,000 people behind bars. And this all comes at a price. On average, it costs £36,000 to keep a prisoner in jail for a year. But the big question for me has to be, what are prisons about? Are they there to contain people, keep dangerous people away from the rest of society? Are they there to rehabilitate? Or are they there to punish? Barlini has a dark history. 10 men have gone to the gallows behind its stone walls. The Lockerbie bomber was imprisoned here. And today, the jail runs on strict routine. And part of that routine is work. Prisoners will be taken out of their cells, walk down the stairs, they'll go through the metal detector, and then they'll be taken along the route to uh, the various places where they work. And work's important in a prison because not only is it a way of them earning money, it's also getting people who may have never actually worked into the habit of doing something, going to work. All convicted prisoners have to work. And for my first shift, I'm going to the prison kitchen. 40 men work here, many of them violent offenders. And each earns £12 a week for cutting, carving and cooking meals for the 1,100 inmates. So 3,500 meals are made here every day at a cost of 83 pence per meal. This place is full of potential weapons. Knives, boiling water, hot soup. And though working here is a privileged position, there is always the potential for violence. Michael, can we get a spatula and a knife, please? Can do. So, they're locked up? Aye, the, all the sharps are locked up in what the case. What number are you, Seventeen. Cheers, thank you. Okay. Oh, well, there's a t you. He asked you for your number, why is that? I'm in charge of this, basically. If somebody gets assaulted with it, it's down to me. Down to you? Aye, uh, it's down to me to obviously keep it beside us and make sure it doesn't get used in somebody. Right. Then I'm using it. Right. Mark is serving seven years for attempted murder. What did you originally do to get sentenced? I stabbed a boy. Really? Aye. Aye. What with? A knife. Not like that one? Aye. Does it make you feel funny when you pick it up? I just don't, I don't like knives now, man. I don't carry them. I used to carry one every day when I was out there because the people I was jumping about with always carried, so I thought it was that's what you do. Hi, I thought that was, that's all right, man. You carry a knife, because all my pals were doing it. But I carried it and used it one day, and it changed my life. Changed someone else's life as well? Changed somebody else's life, aye. Aye. I mean, how badly did you attack him? Really bad. Aye, really bad. But you're not the only person that's in this prison for using one of these, though, oh, are you? No, there's hundreds of people in here for using them. Man. The prison is run on rules under the ever-watchful eye of the prison officers. But it's also run on other rules made by the inmates. I want to find out what they are. So I've come to the exercise yard where I'm meeting Hugh. 
He has a history of violence and has done a few stints in Balini. Here, if we stand over here, mate. So, this is exercise, yeah? That's uh, exercise, mate. What are the do's and don'ts of prison life? Definitely don't fucking grass on anybody. Nah, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's one thing. Keep your mouth shut, nah, I mean. And don't growl, don't, don't walk about, nah, I mean. Staring at people, nah, Give I mean. Give it the hard, man. Uh, the hard, man. Because people just punch you right out your trainers in here, mate. Really? I mean, this, ah, this is Berlin, mate. This gear can kick off in two minutes, mate. Really? Aye, mate, it can happen, happen a heartbeat, mate. Nah, I mean, everything will be nice and calm, mate, and before you get out, mate, there's fucking showing about the ground. Boxing. You know what I mean? People get slashed and that. People get slashed? <laughs> Aye. It's a dangerous show to be in, Ross. You know what I mean? This is no environment to be in, especially for a first offender, mate. Look at it, mate. It's a fucking bird pit, mate. You know, Hugh described this place as a bear pit. It is incredibly dangerous and stressful, both for the prison officers and for the inmates themselves. But it's one thing to fall out with the prison officers here. But if you fall out with the other inmates, your life becomes a living hell. Keeping prisons safe is no easy task. And jails across the country have been struggling to contain trouble. In 2016, violence in Britain's prisons hit record levels, with over 20,000 prisoner-on-prisoner attacks and over 7,000 assaults on staff. Can you say you can fit it on? In Barlini, the Security and Intelligence Unit are on the front line in the battle to keep order in the jail. So what have we got here, Stevie? This is our selection of weapons that we've actually retrieved. All through right. searches and that sort of thing. These are quite ingenious. These were made in here by prisoners. Most of them. This one here yeah, was awesome. made in the joiner shed using a bit of perspex. They've also used one of our power tools to grind it in the shape. I mean, that's a killer. That. And you can't detect it. This type of weapon is very common. Basically what this is, is a razor blade. <sighs> And what they do is they make three layers on it, so when they slash you, you can't it can't stick to your left with a big scar. You can see that there's three blades there. So that's a safety razor that's been dismantled and it's been melted into the end of that. But yeah. well, that's, well, that's a life-changing injury, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. And again, staff have to think, there's prisoners as well, we have to think about these things. Not all weapons are made in jail. Some are smuggled in using extreme measures. And one of these extreme measures is called banking. Let's look at an example. This was actually somebody that came with us banked. Banked that? Yeah. That? Yeah. You are kidding me. No. Well, look at the length of it. And look at the point on it. So you put that up his arse. Yep. There's no cavity check. We don't do cavity checks as routine, though. No. It would actually amaze you what people can secrete. Really? Man banked, yeah. You know, being in the prison a short period of time, there's a feeling that everything is calm, but beneath it... Oh, there's an undercurrent, without a doubt. You, yeah, and I'm beginning to see it. Since 2014, over 700 weapons have been seized in Scottish prisons. And that's not the only thing Stevie's on the lookout for. That is a real phone, right? That's a real phone. It's, people ask us, why can't we stop phones getting into prison? Well, that's a big phone now. You can get a smaller one now. It's about half the thickness of that. Really? Yeah. That'll resale when you go on eBay, you get it for 20 quid. 600 quid for it in here. 600 pounds for a phone? Yeah. It's more lucrative than the drug dealing. Any smartphone, so they get you two grand. Well, iPhone, that sort of thing. Do you ever find that there are people that intentionally put themselves into prison? Without a doubt. You'll get people who have been on HDC, so that's home detention curfew. Right. So they're coming to the Tagged. end of it. Yeah, they go in a tag, yeah. then they'll breach it with a couple of days to go, and they'll come in banked. Right. And Aye, banked, full of drugs, basically. Full of drugs, yeah. And then it's there for them to sell when they're in and make any amounts of money out of it. How much? I mean, do... You can literally make thousands. I mean, the sky's the limit, really. 
From metal detectors to specialist sensors, the prison has a number of ways of finding weapons, mobiles and drugs. But with no cavity search, some prisoners succeed in smuggling them in. And it's not the only way inmates can get their hands on drugs. You've had a lot of throwovers yeah. recently. How does he actually get over the... Over Basically, the it's as simple as using... Uh, do you know those things for throwing a ball for a dog? Oh, yeah, the whipper. The whipper, the whipper. Yeah. Exactly. Like a boomerang. Yeah. They'll stand yeah. at the bottom of the hill near the flats, just outside the jail, and they'll just launch them right in. Then a tennis ball or a package shape like that, that's quite aerodynamic, and launch it right in. People either pick it up or they'll cause a distraction to pick it up. What could be in the package? Street Valium, recently. A lot of Street Valium. You can have anything up to 230 Valium in that. How much is that worth inside this Well, place? outside the prison, it's a pound or a tablet in here, up to five times that per tablet. What's the most ingenious way you've ever ever seen or ever witnessed? Really ingenious. They were using clothing. So we were, there's a pro forma where people can get socks, pants, that sort of thing handed in. Sent? Sent in from their loved family, ones. Yeah. Family, yeah, family, friends. And what they were actually doing was making a solution up with things like Valium. They would put it on, let it dry. When you bring it in, you strain it in a tea and you can drink it and get the same kick as you would get by taking the tablet. How did you first detect that? We get it through intelligence. Across the country, a third of inmates test positive for illegal drugs when leaving prison. Valium, heroin, and the increasing use of new psychoactive substances known as illegal highs or spice are all in demand. Stevie has received a tip off that a prisoner has smuggled drugs, and I'm joining the search. Uh, these guys are saying, uh, for obvious reasons, they are possibly the most unpopular officers in this prison. Uh, you know, for many of the prisoners, the only way of getting through the week is to sometimes take drugs. And uh, these guys stop them from doing that. I want to find out how the prisoner is going to react when we turn up at his cell door. We're going to get your body to actually right? Take your boxers off for me. Prison officer Stevie and his team have received intelligence that a prisoner has smuggled drugs into Balini. Not even the officers on duty in the hall know that this search is going to take place. We want to do an intelligence led search on your cell night. So, what we're going to do, do a cell search. I'm going to shake myself. What do you want to do? Do you want to watch me stand by me? No, I'm not going to do that. He's going to use the loo first. The inmate who they suspect of having drugs, he has a history of it. He's walked back from having his hair cut to find the security team here. He's now decided he needs to go to the toilet. Now, they have an issue. In terms of his human rights, I'm not sure that they can actually witness what he's about to do. Hey, there's a lay line here. I shouldn't have been here. Uh, any sharps? Right. We're going to give you a body search now, right? So if you give me your T-shirt off first. Right, if you take your boxers off for me, just hand them up to me. Squat down as far as you can for me. Right, and squat all the way down. Be a bit further than that. Right, that's tight. Right, if you just wait outside the chair and just watch what they're doing. In there. Is it not a case of, you know, as soon as you discover, oh, it could be in the bottom of the telly, then they stop putting it in the bottom of the telly? Because yeah, someone's I'll found move. out it's gone around the yard. I'll move it again, but they don't always, because it's a good hiding place. You'd always check the cards. Really? Why? Some cards. SIM card? You can get some cards and memory cards in the, in the pack. Stuck in the pack. Uh, One of the best ones is peanut butter. Because it's thick. Like a, phone, a phone inside the peanut butter. Inside a plastic? Wrapped inside plastic. a plastic container. Yeah. Well, what made you suspicious that it might be in the peanut butter? Oh, just one of these things, you know, you get an intuition. You just got an intuition, you think. Where was I hide it? <laughs> I is that, that how you think? I don't know was that, that same about you? <laughs> 
take the ball. And then, you know, I've had a phone in there before. See the wee Bluetooth ones? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tap. But this is basically what a plumber uses, right? That is, yeah. Just see what's in behind the unit there. So, Jim, when you do find something, is it like a fisherman catching a fish? What's it feel like? You've, you've done your job. Hey, guys, I just come. Yay! Hey, boys, that's us. All right, we'll take that razor. Razor. That search took the best bit of an hour and a half, and while the officers didn't find anything, they've said to me that they learned a bit of intel. And the inmate, to be fair, said, look, I've only been in a week, give me some time. And in the past, he has had mobile phones and drugs in his cell. There's this continuous game of cat and mouse. No matter what precautions you take to stop drugs coming in to a prison, they'll always get in because of the demand and because of the profit to be made. When prisoners are caught with drugs or weapons, they are sent to a disciplinary hearing. I've been given special permission to sit in with duty governor, Phil. I think they respect the orderly room, they respect the prison rules, they know they're there. The punishments dished out include loss of TV, withdrawal of recreation and cash fines. And if things are more serious, the police get involved and time can be added to a sentence. There's a copy of the prison rules there, oh, AG, if you, if you need them, OK? Cool. You understand the charge and the purpose of the game? Yes. Are you ready to go ahead with it? Aye. How do you plead? Not guilty. It's no, it's no mine, not mine. OK, plea of not guilty, I'll read out the charge. You did have in your possession within cell 308 a homemade pipe used for smoking illegal, illegal substances and when questioned, admitted to smoking can a bit of cannabis. I said to him, if, if I was going to smoke it, it'd be a bit of hash, not I mean? I never said to him, I smoked a bit uh, of hash. Can you identify that as the, the item we're talking about? I've never seen that before. I've never seen it before, man. So nobody showed you it? No, I've never seen it. Not identified, OK? Mm, cool. So you can't identify that? It's, I, I've seen, it's no mine, not I mean? The fact that you identify that as being the, the, the offending article aye. doesn't mean you're guilty. Aye, aye. So if you I say to me, it, I have I've seen, seen it. it. I have seen it before, That's but cool. it's no... The stars right. never so, showed me. So we've got somewhere. No, you you do recognise that. Is that fair? I've seen it before. So aye. we can identify that as being the item that we're talking about aye. in here. Aye, aye. That's good. Right. We're getting somewhere now. I'm trying to be realistic what happened in the cell, right. OK? Cool. It's not the worst crime in the world. Officer comes to your door and he says to you, you've been taking spice. No, a wee bit of hash. Right. OK? Without me minimising it, a wee bit of hash. All right, cool. Is that fair? Aye, ah, yeah, that's exactly what I say. Right, right cool. that's, we've moved a long way, Faye. Right, cool. Nothing harmed. Let's get to the charge. Guilty, no guilty? Just guilty. Guilty with that. Would you like to change your plea, young man? Aye, ah, just guilty and get on. Are you sure? Man. I'm choking for a roll up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go with 14 recreation yeah. for your honesty. Aye, ah, sir. So. Okay. He said I wouldn't say no to a piece of hash. Ah. And then it became, well, I might have had some hash. Or, yeah. Yes, I did have some hash. Yes. So we got there eventually. <laughs> Pretty fair to him. He's only yeah. young. He's got yeah. family as well. So he's got a child. You know, and he wants to speak to them. And you could deny him access yeah, to that absolutely. effectively by taking his money away. But what you've yeah. done is denied him access to rec. To recreation association with people. Losing 14 recreation means no snooker, no chatting with mates for a fortnight. And to my mind, not too high a price to pay for using drugs. For some men here, the cost of drug use is huge, pushing back their chance of freedom not by days, but by years. And in a corner of Barlini, I'm going to meet one of these men. 
He's held in a separate facility called the National Top End. Most inmates here are serving a minimum of 10 years, and several men have been in prison for over 40. The inmate who wants to remain anonymous killed a family member over allegations of domestic abuse. Originally serving a life sentence with a 12-year minimum, he's now served 18 years behind bars. Why have you served so much time? It's drug tests. I mean, I'm, I'm an addict. You'd never taken heroin until you got to prison? No. The main reason why we started taking heroin was because the cannabis stays in your system for up to 28 days, but the heroin is out your system in three days. So when they actually tested you during the week, Aye. you'd be clean? Aye. Aye. Did you take it to, to effectively remove yourself from prison for a bit? If you're, if you're high, you're not here, are you? Aye. Was that why? That's exactly why. It's hard to wrap your head in a life sentence. Just take the heroin and it just blanks everything, blanks your emotions, blanks your thought patterns. You lie for days, weeks, months, it turns into years. But each time you got caught taking it, they added more onto your tariff. Aye, aye. Going back to it, you know, you say that you, you get this sentence, it's life, you know. You killed someone. Mm-hmm. That's right, aye. Regrets? Aye. I'm asking the parole board now, please let me out. I've passed my 12 year punishment part. I've done another seven year and happy that. I've changed. I will not commit another crime. Please give me that second chance. But I never give that guy a second chance. So it's all regret. Oh, yeah. Do you think then that you have been rehabilitated? I don't know about rehabilitation, but I definitely think different. I don't know if that's because I'm older now, mm. or if it's through the result of the offending behaviour programmes that I've done. But it seems to be irrelevant because it's drugs I'm getting kept in from now. What about while you've been in here? What, what were the darkest moments for you? Personally, my darkest time was when you realise yourself that what you're, when you come face to face with yourself properly, to come to terms with the worst kind of person and understand that that's you. And it's cost you nearly 20 years of your life. And his life. Aye. He's served 12 years for murder, but his heroin addiction has cost him another six. And he's not the only one paying a price for his drug use. His extra time in jail will have cost the taxpayer around £200,000. And that's a heavy price to pay for everyone. In 1987, one of the worst riots in British prison history happened at Barlini. Inmates took control of the roof and five prison officers were taken hostage. Since then, prison officers have worked hard 
to keep a lid on this pressure cooker of a prison. I want to find out how they keep discipline when they are outnumbered and outmuscled. So, Danny, you got a lot of blokes here. Two yes. Quite strong lads. Bit of adrenaline pumping inside them. Someone yep. knocks into someone. You've got a lot of weapons here, potentially lethal weapons. Yeah. How do you keep a lid on it? Well, I'm 29 years on the job, right. so experience is very important. Not everything, but it is important. In general, you can find you'll get a feel of the gym and a feel of the class, how it's going, psychology is everything. Generally, we've got three staff in here with 42 prisoners. You're outnumbered? Three staff. It doesn't matter who you are, can you control 42? So, gymnasium is running the good relations between staff and prisoners. Without the goodwill of the prisoners, prisons don't run. Well, if we didn't have the goodwill, prisoners, prisons would be a lot tighter regimes. Because yeah. the staff will always stay in control of the prisons. Or they should stay in control. Yes, we do have instances, especially in England right now, yeah. there's loads of in uh, instances when yeah. they're losing control. Danny, I've noticed while you've been talking to me, your head is continuously monitoring everything that everyone does. Well, I put it in that prisoner because he points the bag with the bag match on. Me and I, don't punch the bag. Don't punch the bag. Don't punch it behind your hands. Yeah? Big sign, big sign. Go, go. Big sign, right. Not the brightest. Do very, very firm, but very fair. That's my job. That is good job. Rehabilitate them, re-educate them, re-whatever you want to say. But the bottom line is, guys make mistakes and they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Generally you find, as they get older and they get wiser, if they don't succumb to the, the perils of drugs and crime and get shot or something, generally you find once they meet a good woman, once they've done their third long-term sentence, they, went out of they realise what am I doing here? Danny seems optimistic that a lot of guys, given time, will get back on the straight and narrow. However, there are a few prisoners here that some argue just can't be rehabilitated. I've been in Barlini some time now and I've been into every hall apart from one, and that's E Hall. That's where the sex offenders are kept. They're kept separate from the other inmates. In fact, the other inmates refer to them as beasts. They account for one fifth of the prison population here in Barlini. And across Scotland, they're the fastest growing prison population. Honestly, I'm not looking forward to going in there. E Hall holds up to 280 sex offenders. That's four times as many as a decade ago. An increasing number are older, convicted of historic sex abuse. And some have even died here. The oldest sex offender is 89 years of age and needs carers to come in twice a day. One inmate has agreed to talk to me on the basis we hide his identity and disguise his voice. He's serving time for downloading indecent images of children. Is it your first offence? Uh, no, it's not. It's my third offence for similar things. If you know that you will be punished for doing what you do, looking at indecent pictures of children, why do you carry on doing it? Because I'm an idiot, basically. Uh, I don't know. It's very difficult to explain even to myself why I did it, but I thought I would get away with it, uh, I suppose. Do you think you can be rehabilitated? No. No? In the sense of cured. Mm. I don't think I will offend again. I'm pretty sure I won't offend again. In that sense, yes. Uh, but you can't be cured of your, 
your feelings for children? No, I'm sure not. You're sure not? Yeah. Does that not make you a threat to society, to children? No. But it didn't before I committed this offence. Um, well, do you not think that the children that are in those images that you see have been forced into doing the things that you like to look at? Um, I honestly want to keep an open mind on that because it, some of them, I think, seem to quite enjoy it and, you know... You're telling me that the children in those images are enjoying themselves? Yes, some of them, I think. You seriously think that you should be allowed out of prison? Yes. Why? Because I don't see what harm I would do outside. What, you don't think there's any harm being done to those children, the pictures well, that you like to Well, we do it again now, but I accept that I have done harm, which is why I'm here. Basically, I think that's it. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. You release me, please. You have to question why someone who enjoys looking at indecent images of children being forced to have sex is not a threat to society, especially when you know he will be out of prison very soon. I found that disturbing. And I can't help but think how difficult it must be for prison officers that work with sex offenders every day. Donna has agreed to talk to me. Do you read their case forms? I've, I've read their trial judge reports and narratives and stuff from the court, which are very descriptive on their crimes um, and obviously their, their backgrounds and stuff, so I have done that. Huh? Does that... Does that change the way that you, you think about them? No, it, it, it's hard. It does affect you, obviously, because there's some things that you'd rather... You've read, I've read that I would rather not have read and, you know, you don't want that imprint in your head, yeah. but it doesn't... When you're in here working with them, you're in doing a job, so it's not something that you, you genuinely don't think about it. Mm. Also, there, there are rapists in here. Mm -hmm. um, you're a woman. I know there's rapists in here. I know there's people who would sexually offend against somebody my age or any of the other females, mm. or even the males in here, the male officers, but it's not something that you come in every day and you think, I'm going in here to work with these sex offenders who could potentially attack me. I mean, they're in but, close proximity to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They obviously can't control their urges towards women. No, uh -huh. no. I think you are very brave. I don't know. I think it probably takes a certain type of person to come in and definitely work in, work in an environment like this, a female and a male as well. Mm. But I, I suppose, I, yeah, you could say the staff that come in are, are brave. Five the same flat. I spoke to a sex offender earlier, and one thing that one of the officers came up and said to me quite openly, he said, "How did it go?" And I said, "Well, it was, um, it was shocking to talk to someone that was so open and explicit about their views." particularly towards children. And he said, you've got to remember that there are other people locked up in here that have done far worse things, unspeakable things.
I've been surprised by what I've seen here. I've met hard cases, I've met desperate cases, and I've met sad cases. But there's one thing that unites many of them. One day, they will be free. Hey, dude, boys. My final stop is the barbers. I've not come from a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Where 10 prisoners are employed to cut inmates' hair. And it's a chance to do a job I did a long time ago. My mum was a hairdresser, so that's what I did when I was a kid anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's my job. I should be sticking it on my head. <laughs> Kevin has previous convictions for attempted murder and assault. And I want to know if he's finally turned his back on a life of crime. I've changed. I've got kids and all that. How much do you miss your kid? I think about my son every single day, and it breaks my heart to think that I'm not part of his life you now. How old is he? He's 16, 17 months old. He was born in January, you know. What about liberation? What does it feel like? It's the best feeling in the world. Aye, <laughs> 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 uh, the best feeling in the world, aye. You can't beat it. It's, uh, it's, it's a feeling that you'll never forget. So the first thing you want is to go and see your missus and have time there. You're missed out in your sexual life for you, so... <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> aye. But it is, that's the first thing we own people's minds, really. Yeah. They're sexual frustrated in here, some people, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see some boys are like, Jesus Christ, man. But, yeah. but, it's, but also, you look at the age group, of, I mean, how old are you? I'm 26. I'm 31. Right, but, see, I can say this, you're young guys. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? This is the time that you should be out there. Right. This is the time yeah. for disco dancing. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Liberation is a happy day for most prisoners, but for some repeat offenders, I can't help thinking it's just part of a cycle. Stay the crab liberation, please. Robert is finishing a seven-month stretch for breach of the peace and breaking his community payback order. Liberation day. Choking to get out. Choking. <laughs> First time you've ever been in prison? No. It's like a revolving door for me. But I can only try and stay out. How many times do you think you've I've been I've lost count. You've lost count? Aye. Over five? Aye, over five. Okay. Keep out of trouble this time. Aye. See you later. See you later. It costs the taxpayer around £3,000 a month to keep a prisoner in jail. That makes the bill for Robert's seven month stay. £21,000, which is more than a young prison officer earns in a year. I can't help thinking there has to be a cheaper and better way of punishing and rehabilitating revolving door prisoners like him. Life transformed. Say hi. Good man. Yes. Look much better now. <laughs> much better. Much better now. Yeah. I sort of under me. Mm. So go and see my wife. Mm. Get things sorted. Good luck. No problem. Have you stay out. So they are. <laughs> Cheers, man. Only a few weeks after I met Robert, I was told he has outstanding charges. Sadly, his freedom is once again uncertain. Most of the prisoners I've met are stuck in a cycle of life in and out of jail. I want to know what, if anything, can be done to break that cycle. And the one person who may have an answer is the governor. The prison population has doubled mm -hmm. in the last 25 years. What can be done to stop that trend? Send less people to prison. <laughs> Mm. is the, the easiest answer. We send a lot of people for very short sentences um, and we effectively can't do very much. In fact, it probably causes more harm. They lose their tenancy, they could lose their job, they lose connection with their family or it adversely affects mm. their connection with their family. So sending people for short periods of time in custody is probably not 
rehabilitative or helpful at all. But there'll be people watching this and saying prison is about punishing people. Is it? I would rather it was about changing people. But we know that there are so many revolving door prisoners out there, not just coming back to Barney, but prisons across the United Kingdom. Do prisons really work? I think they do for some people. We can make it work for those we have here for a bit of time. For those that are just in and out, it's, it's a pointless exercise. And somebody once said to me that prisons should be there for the people that we're afraid of, who are dangerous, and not for the ones we're annoyed at. Mm. So. I'm still not sure if prisons work, but I have discovered the financial cost and the human cost of jail. And I've learned a lot. There are definitely people here who should remain here because of the threat that they pose to others. And there are some who are here because of one awful mistake that has changed their lives and other people's lives forever. And sadly, there are some who call this place home because they have nowhere else to go. But the vast majority are repeat offenders, trapped in a cycle of substance abuse, violence and criminality. And while some of those don't want to change, there are some here that do. And what I've found from the prisoners here is that the only person that can truly change them is themselves. My question is, are we doing our best to encourage this change to happen?